So hi. Right, so today's uh, community call um, is uh, focuses on the template, the, well, the checklist that we added and it will be made available in Argos uh, in the next release uh, about how to create a software management plan. So what we did was we got the checklist uh, of the software provided by the Software Sustainability Institute um, that was developed around 2018. So it's kind of uh, old news actually, but it provides a good base uh, for what we aim to be uh, doing um, in terms of um, supporting software elements in Argos. So this is the link for the, for the checklist, actually, the latest version of the checklist that you can find on the nodo. Let me actually also share my screen. That would make things easier. Yes, so this is the link that I just shared with you. Oops. And um, yes, and this is the one that we uh, used basically. So as you can see, uh, the publication date of this version, because this is the latest version, is 10th December. Um, and this, the checklist has um, information, asks actually for information uh, that can um, contribute to providing a better understanding and uh, image of how the software has been managed throughout the project and what were the different uh, roles in this um, in, in software development and management, uh, what, how the um, how the different people involved um, collaborated, what were the communication tools that they use and how uh, they expect to, or they have shared uh, their software uh, later, what are the access uh, rights and the licenses attached to the software and so on. So giving a, an overview of um, those kinds of information um, that can facilitate um, better understanding of, of different elements uh, during the management life cycle of the software. And here you can see uh, one first question is about the intended users and how it is, how, how you can, how we can find, how we see it uh, in the in Zenodo is we find the main question asked, right? Then other questions to consider. So they're breaking down the, 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 the big question um, with sub questions to, um, to, to, to um, allow for um, more details um, from researchers. So to get more information uh, about different things that they would like to check. Um, by by posing this question, the big question in the beginning. And then there is the guidance. The guidance uh, where you can find how uh, you can, uh, there is instructions on how uh, you can provide your input to answer this question, uh, what type of information is expected, and uh, also uh, guidance uh, on where to find things and uh, proper best practices, let's say, um, that can support uh, the, your answer to this question. And this is how it goes. So there is a, a bigger, let's say, question and then uh, questions that break down the, the main question and some guidance provided. Let me see in the chat. Okay, no, in the chat. So what we did is we um, in Argos, in so, sorry, in the test instance of Argos, we created this 
template for the soft for, for this template that we just saw, right? And we also added an extra element for costs. And this information we took for from previous versions of the sustain, uh, of the SSI template. So past versions had uh, many questions here and there in different sections um, around fees and costing, um, some services acquired or you know the different different things uh, during the software uh, development uh, and management. So we kept it here. Uh, to check also with you how, how you would like to, if you would like to have it and if it's useful to have. And let me now show you how this template looks like. If you go to um, to argos.edu, now it's not available, but when it will be available, you click start union DMP, start wizard. You add the information for um, the software management plan, so the title. A description for your software management plan. You add who are the researchers that are um, involved in this uh, data, in the software management plan, the organization. So I'm going to skip it because uh, I don't want to take more time which is the funding organization let's say it's european commission the grant associated to this project uh, let's randomly pick one let's provide a license also to our software management plan let's say that i want it to be creative commons for yes perfect access and let me, uh, in, on the fourth step, well, I'm asked to select the template for the templates that I want. Um, in this occasion, I'm going to select the template that I uh, just showed you, the Software Sustainability Institute template. Of course, uh, you know that you can add multiple. So for example, if you have a project that you want to use multiple templates and mix, you know, a, and select each time for the output that you are uh, describing the correct template, you can do it. For example, I could have here the Horizon Europe or the Horizon 2020 because uh, I have the Horizon 2020. I, I know the, the structure that it has, but it doesn't give me uh, more uh, enough flexibility to answer uh, questions that are relevant to software. So in that case, I'm going to add the SSI template to support me in this. And let me save this. I'm not going to prefill now. I'm going to add it manually. So these also are going to change where, wherever you see data set from the next release of Argos, you will see uh, output instead of data set because we are um, expanding things and we, and as you know already, um, the different, starting from the European Commission, right, as a policymaker um, in the Horizon Europe, they do not only, um, require data sets well they do not only include data sets uh, as part of the dmp but also software workflows and other outputs so we are also um, expanding to to support that uh, let's provide a title for this uh, software um, that we will be describing okay Let's fill in the description. And select the template that I want. Now I'm describing a data set. So I'm going to choose the uh, SSI template, the, system, the Software Sustainability Institute template, instead of something else. And I click Next. 
to view the template. Let me also save it just to be sure. And here you can see uh, the template. You can see that you have uh, an introduction to what the template is about. So basically explaining um, some things about the software management plan and the questions. So what the first question, as we saw before on the Zenodo was what software will you, will you develop? So we have it here uh, along with all the subsequent questions to support more detailed answers uh, to be provided and the input um, where the, sorry, the, the place where the input can be provided. As you saw, I clicked view more and when I clicked view more, the guidance appeared. So I can click, if I click, I don't know if you still, uh, are you still be able to, to, to see my screen? Yes. Did it change? Okay, perfect. So now you see, yes, I clicked. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. Uh, but now I have to go back and I have to move these things. All right, okay, good. So now, uh, let me go back, okay. Uh, I can view more to check the guidance. I check the guidance and I'm ready to answer. So let me uh, add a name of, of how the, how the uh, software. Um, sorry, this is repetition. This is not the latest. Okay, this we already did, sorry. But now we can specify the scope of software by providing, uh, by answering all those questions or those that at least are relevant for our uh, case, for our project. And, you know, we can uh, e even have hyperlinks here, um, here to redirect to add references or redirect to other sources that um, can support our answers. Uh, and, yeah. To say that we, we, we specify this for this one. Now, the next question was who are the intended users of your software with these uh, follow up questions to, to help um, provide a better, more, more thorough answer. Guidance is this, I give you more. Uh, and again, uh, I'm able to write an answer uh, in the box below. And then the next question is about how will you make your software available to your users with, again, some subsequent questions, the guidance. And here I can add a landing page. If it's not a landing page, then it's not valid. So let's add the landing page. Yes, I have to do the whole HTTP, sorry, let me just copy this to do it. Okay, now this is correct because this is a valid, um, a valid URL. Uh, here I can select the license in the questions. If you can check, there is one about the license. Uh, under what kind of license will you make your software available? So now I can select here um the licenses for example i can um, i might have um gnu and some components might have apache for example and then i can specify what uh i mean um to provide more details on the answers that i have provided uh above but also um on the extra or, 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 or on all the other um answer uh, questions that i uh, that were not uh, in the previous um, 
boxes. Then fourth question is about how will you support those who use your software? Uh, and here is a pretext again. So you can specify how you're uh, aiming to do that uh, by answering all those questions. What level of support will you offer? How much effort will you have available to support your users? How you will manage their requests for help and so on. Next question is about how will you use, will your software contribute to research and um, how it will help researchers or others or yourself to conduct research more easily uh, or to enable research that cannot be done at present and all those different um, elements. So again, a pretext for you to specify how you are intend to do that. Next question is how, how will your software relate to other research objects? And here you can select um, the publications that relate to this software. And this again searches the whole um, open air discovery portal. So millions of publications from uh, more than 12,000 uh, sources, journals uh, and uh, repositories. So let's say that this is the one uh, supporting the software and maybe, I don't know, this one. But of course I can, uh, can also search. So now I'm randomly choosing some, but I can also check the specific one that I want. Similarly, I can make the link to the related data set for the software. Maybe that uh, I've used as an input uh, to this um, project. Again, it searches the whole data set, so millions of data sets, the whole open air, millions of data sets, and I can select the, all data sets uh, that relate to this. The same I, I can do for services um, that uh, relate to the software, maybe that use the software. And here is the EOSC services. Um, so it searches the EOSC services. So I can, for example, select the services that have used the software. And again, I, I, I can specify my question. And uh, complementary to just, uh, you know, to making the links, because here, what you add here, will become um, a related um, link in the metadata record that will be created for your software management plan. So at the end, when you will complete the whole uh, software management plan here, you will cl click save, you will finalize it once it's ready, and the, the last step is to publish it on Zenodo so that uh, you make it findable. And when you publish it on Zenodo, it's just a click, it's very easy. So when you publish it on Zenodo, um, then you will also get those links uh, with this, uh, with the identifiers of these um, publications, data sets, yes, publications and data sets basically, and a, a related, a field that shows the relation for the services as well. So all the links will be kept. Uh, oh, sorry, do we have a question? No, no. Until, okay. until now, no. Um, right, and then next question is about how will, how will you measure your software's contribution to research? And there are some follow-up questions that uh, talk about me measuring uh, downloads uh, of the software or who has used the software and other types, uh, other means uh, of, uh, of measurements, guidance to support um, an answer, um, you know, a thorough answer, and an open-ended uh, field here just for you to specify. An answer. Last question is about where will you deposit your software to guarantee its long-term availability? 
couple of questions about uh, the repository, the digital repository uh, that uh, will be used and um, the unique person identifier for your deposit uh, and uh, all the, the policies of the repository and so on. So here we broke down the input, uh, the, the input that you can provide to answer the, those questions. So here, same way as before, uh, you select the digital repository where this uh, software can be found. Okay. And uh, I add a preservation statement if, I f if, if there is any. Uh, so how this, um, how preservation and, and especially long-term preservation is guaranteed. And I specify uh, my answer by also um, uh, answering uh, other questions from above. Then th this is for, for the, the version that I shared with you in the chat up to here, up to 1.1.8. The extra things that we added um, is about costing software management. And again, we based this, so we took, we selected, we handpicked the questions that uh, were relevant to costs and fees during the different steps of the of the software management from the previous question, from the previous version of the template and um, the checklist. And we provide them uh, here uh, in that way. So some of the questions relate to uh, charging the users to access the software or um, if third-party data systems and databases are free or you have to pay for them to get to get access when you're um, developing the software. Um, if the repository for preservation is also free or you have to pay uh, similarly for any com communication protocols uh, and data formats if they are free or you have to pay. And you can select the currency and provide an answer about the costs. So this is the first, let's say, draft, the first version of our um, implementation of this checklist in Argos. And we would like to know your thoughts, your views, what um how you find it is this useful um you would you like something to change and just say that we are starting yes i mentioned at the beginning that we are starting this um uh, expanding things and especially for software so first uh, is this temp is this checklist that we want to add and we are already working uh in parallel on um um adding a version of the data set for, data set for data sets. Let me also add this link in the chat. So data sets for data sets are like, oh, where are my other chat sets? Data sets for data sets were, created um, uh, by Microsoft, um, by a group uh, in within Microsoft. And they were created again in, I think it was 2018. Yes, submitted in 2018. With latest revision, yes, made it, uh, two years ago. And their intention is to be used as, as similar to a data management plan with uh, sections and questions and guidance, but to support machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, applications. And you know, we're moving now to this uh, ChatGPT era. And before, 
uh, hopefully you can still see my whole screen, right? Before we start, I actually asked ChatGPT what is to, to explain me what a software management plan is, and a whole um, see uh, a whole list of things uh, appeared. So we are um, even software management plans are expanding, and um, hence why we're trying to uh, also have multiple templates for software or other types of outputs to, to support you. Um, but yes, so enough of me rambling. Let me go back to uh, this template that we drafted, this checklist, this first checklist. How it looks, uh, is it useful to you? What are the questions that you would like to see and you don't find in this template? Let me stop share maybe. And open the discussion. So is this a is this something useful to you? That's a and and is a question, <laughs> fairly easy question. No. Either it is or it's not. I don't know how to re receive how to receive this. Right. Uh, so have you? Yes, it is. Okay. Have you um, tried? To, have you um, what are your let's say questions when you when you try to document the software so you have a te the template of European Commission for example or I don't know what other template you might have and are there any specific questions that you think for software that today are not available in this template that you're using, for example, the European Commission for Horizon Europe. Mm -hmm. Anyone would like to comment something to, to make uh, a statement even? Okay, then I think you find it useful. Um, this was what I understood from the chat. And I look forward to see how it plays. I mean, we have to test it. Are there any volunteers to test it actually? Uh, that would be uh, good. If you would like to test it before it goes to production. Hali, can you hear me? Yes, hi. Um, 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 I am Roberta Turra from Chineca and I never, I never documented the software so far, but uh, I saw that in the Horizon Europe template, uh, there is a section in the data management plan, which is devoted to the other research output. So I think I will have to do it in the future, but I was wondering, do we really need uh, so much detail? Because the template you showed is very detailed, uh, but the, the section in the data management plan is not so detailed. That is true, and you can answer only the questions that uh, you think are relevant to you. So you can choose. It's not um, if if you if you want to skip some, uh, you can feel free to do so. Um, 
Yes, Robert, I don't know if you were here last time, the previous community call, but there was uh, this uh, discussion about having a software man management plan, which has more details, as you say, as, as, as the one that I showed, uh, and having um, the template as it is, the, for example, the Horizon uh, Europe, which um, doesn't uh, include that much level of detail. So the, the let's say the request that at the end of this discussion was that um, it's good, the, the Horizon Europe template, it's good as it is. It doesn't have to uh, be very detailed uh, around software for now, but we would need another template that is more detailed. So if, you, if, if someone has a software and it's a very software oriented uh, project, they feel that they, they can cover more by using other, by incorporating other templates in their DMP in Argos. So I don't know if that makes sense how I explain it. Yes, yes, so thank you. <laughs> so if it's not a software specific, you keep the one that is already there, basically. Yes, the presentation was very interesting and also the paper that you shared in the Nodo. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, glad that you liked it. And I see also Liz is happy to help testing. Good, Liz. I will be contacting you uh, after. Uh, Roberta, does that mean that you are also keen in testing it? No, I, I'm not. I'm not candidating. <laughs> okay, okay. But thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, right. And I see in the chat. Let me see. Martin, software is often depending on many factors which we can't fully control. Example, software versions of cloud services, et cetera. How would this be handled in the uh, SMP software management plan? Questions around resource consumptions, costs for running would be helpful for others who plan to use the software, yes. So again, um, software, a software management plan is not something that is stabilized, let's say. It's not that... Um, uh, mature as the data management plan uh, and many discussions are happening uh, even t t these days um, for what a software management plan is and even if we some even argue that we might not need a software management plan we might need an open science plan or an, uh, an outputs plan to incorporate everything to, to keep everything in one uh, plan um, so yes, so it's something that is not uh, mature enough. However, we are involved in discussions um, that um, intend to provide some sort of standardization to this concept of software management plans. And uh, next month, we are going to have a workshop uh, where we'll try to see how the software management plan, what, what are the elements that are um, suggested by different organizations and initiatives like the Institute that we showed, uh, like the Elixir software management plan uh, template and, and other sources and see what are the commonalities and try to provide, try to also expand the, um, the standard uh, for DMPs uh, around that. So we're getting there, but we're not there yet. However, uh, I see, so questions around resource consumption, because I will make sure to uh, bring your, um, your point about the resource consumption because for running uh, to to this discussion, and I can contact you and, and keep you in the loop around that if you if you uh, I mean if you want. Good. Yeah. So anything else? So what what was um. 
what do you feel? Do you also feel that it's a very foggy, um, a very foggy concept? Right. Well, then, if that's all, thank you very much. That was short. Uh, I will be contacting you, um, Liz, and you uh, will, um, I mean, we'll, we'll talk next month in the next community call. Uh, and if the release is before that, I'll let you know so that uh, you know when the checklist is available and you can use it. If there are no other questions, which I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to stay and, and answer other questions or discuss other things apart from the main point, the main topic. Okay, if there are not, then um, I'll see you all again next month and have a good uh, rest of the day.